from the top. Take 49. <laughs> take 149. 20 more times and I'll have it. Yeah, that's, that's it. <laughs> Hey guys, Paul Altieri here from Bob's Watches. For those of you who don't know Bob's Watches, we're one of the leading online retailers of pre-owned and vintage watches. About 90% of what we do is modern watches, but occasionally we get a really cool vintage watch in like we did uh, just this morning. So I'm excited to open that box up. I have seen photos of the watch, but until you open that box up, uh, you really don't know what, what it's gonna look like. So I'm excited to open it up and share that watch with you. Now I take a break and come back at five? Yeah. That's it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Again, Bob's watches, we get hundreds of calls, thousands of calls every month. Uh, they think they've got a vintage watch or they think they've got an old Datejust or an old Submariner. A lot of times it, it doesn't materialize. This one did, we're real excited about it. We got a call from a guy, uh, the son of the original owner, uh, about a month ago. And we've been talking to him on the phone and through emails and it came in today. We're real excited about it, so let's get this open. So I don't cut myself. Okay, guys, this is uh, what we all wait for. I got into the, the collecting world. I got kind of, quote, the bug, uh, the collecting bug, about uh, eight years ago, nine years ago, when I bought my first Rolex GMT 6542. And ever since then, the collection of mine, my personal collection is grown pretty steadily as some of you guys know. I'm still amazed by them. I still get excited by them and maybe I'm going to add to it right now. So let's get this thing opened up. Looks like it's packaged pretty well. It's got a decent amount of bubble wrap to it. I've seen photos of it but until you get the real McCoy in your hand you kind of don't know what it's going to look like. Wow it looks great. 5513 looks to be early 60s uh, and has been polished a little bit in the past, but it's got the original rivet bracelet. It looks like it's got an engraving on the back, which is not a big deal. Love the fact that it's got the original bezel to it, which is always nice. Probably the original crystal even. Uh, hands, everything matches, it's perfect. This is what it's all about for me. For you guys that know me, I love vintage watches. I love modern watches as well. We specialize in Rolex. Uh, I've always had an affinity for Rolex, even as a kid growing up. Uh, but my collection, my vintage collection, has really grown over the years because I love these watches. My collection, vintage collection, started uh, about eight years ago when I bought my first 6542. The watch had come in. It was completely Frankensteined out. Uh, parts were all replaced. It had a service dial. The hands were all replaced. The bezel wasn't original. It needed a Bakelite bezel. That had already been taken off and it had a metal metal bezel on it. There was no bracelet to the watch. That kind of kick-started me and got me fascinated because prior to that I was always into modern watches. But this watch right here because it has such an interesting uh, backstory to it that uh, this will probably stay in my collection. So we're gonna tell you a little bit more about the original owner on this watch. So Ray became a uh, deep sea diver in 1967. He took his training in the Philippines and graduated first in his class. So he's a real cool guy. Take 214, he became a deep sea diver, uh, a saturation diver. And if you don't know what that is, Google it because it's fascinating. Very dangerous work, it's highly pressurized. He was also an underwater demolition diver as well, which is also very dangerous. But what's interesting is he chose to be a, uh, a deep sea diver because it paid 50% more in salary. Ray bought the watch on the Navy base in 1968. He paid a little under $300 back in 1968 for the watch. He was looking at the time at an Omega and a Doxa with an orange dial. And at that time he was a quartermaster which meant that he needed it to be, his watch to be extremely accurate. And the Rolex he ended up buying only lost two seconds per month and he thought that was amazing. Another little funny story too is after, in a, although he spent a number of years in the service, when he entered back into the, uh, the US, he was forced to pay a $100 custom fee on the Rolex watch that he was wearing on his wrist. Normally if you're wearing a watch, they don't make you pay the duty tax but in his case they did and that kind of irked him. To this day, 40 years later, 50 years later, it still kind of bothers him. Sam, 
I'm not Brad Pitt. After he left the service, he did uh, a lot more deep sea diving in the North Sea. He uh, actually did deep sea diving in 30 to 40 countries, if I recall the number, which I think is amazing and astounding. I always get this question where people say, how do you find these watches? How do you find these amazing watches with these really cool stories behind them? Uh, you know, and I always give them the same answer, which is, I don't find the watches, they find us, luckily. We're, we're fortunate, the phone rings, we pick it up. Uh, it's not always a cool story, it's not always a great watch, uh, but this one happens to be. So this is another watch with an amazing story behind it. I'm glad I got a chance to share it with you all. Uh, Ray, Ray is a typical tried and true uh, enthusiast. We're happy to have this story, and it's why I got in collecting in the first place and will continue building my collection uh, because of watches and stories like this. Um, yeah, hey guys, thank you yeah. both.